In this video, we're going to look at the situation where you have more than one functional group in a molecule. For instance, if you had a molecule that contained both an alcohol group and a ketone group, how would you name that? Well, here's our list of functional groups again. And it's in the same order that we've been using so far, but you'll notice that I've added a few new columns. On the left, I've put uh, uh, numbers in order from 1 to 10, and that indicates the priority of the group, or how important it is. So when we have two functional groups in a molecule, the way we solve the naming problem is to make one of them the suffix of the name and to treat the other one like a substituent. But how to choose which one? Well, IUPAC have come up with this list of priorities for that very purpose. When you have two functional groups in a molecule, whichever one is higher up on this list will be the one that determines the suffix of the name. It will be treated exactly like all the examples we've done in previous videos. The other lower priority functional group will be named like a substituent, and for that purpose each group has another name that's used in this situation. For instance, when a molecule just has an aldehyde group in it, the name ends with the suffix al. But say it has both an aldehyde and a carboxylic acid, then the name will end in the suffix oic acid, because the carboxylic acid is higher priority, and somewhere at the front of the name we will have a substituent called oxo, and that indicates the lower priority aldehyde group. Note down all these prefix versions of the functional group names, and then let's move on and try out some examples. One last note before we do though. Now that we have two functional groups, it's important to note that you must number your main chain so that the highest priority functional group gets the lowest possible number. OK, some fairly easy ones first, to show you how to deal with alkenes and alkynes that have extra functional groups. Here we have something that's both an alkene and an alcohol. Alcohols come further up the priority list, so the name is going to end in ol. And there are five carbons, so it's based on pentane, but there's a double bond, so that makes it pentene. And then we add the ol, and that gives us pentenol. However, we need to put in some numbers to say where the OH and the double bond are. So we number from the alcohol end, and that gives us pent2ene1ol. OK, next. This is an alkyne, but also a ketone. Note that the carbonyl group is not on an end carbon. So we find the main chain that's seven carbons long, uh, and it has a triple bond, so that makes it heptyne. And it's a ketone, so then we add the own suffix and it becomes heptyneone. Now we need to number those functional groups as before, so we start from the right, and that gives us hept 3 ine 2 ohn And lastly, there's this methyl group here on carbon number five, as a substituent, so we end up with 5-methyl hept 3 ein 2 ohn OK, now for a couple of trickier ones. First one, find the main chain. Here it is, and it's 7 carbons long, so it's heptane. It has a carboxylic acid group on this end, and an alcohol group in the middle. Of those two, the carboxylic acid has the higher priority, so the root of the name is heptanoic acid. And now we just have to treat the alcohol as a substituent. You'll see from your notes that when an alcohol group is not the priority group, it's known as hydroxy. And in this molecule, it's on carbon number four, numbering from the right where the carboxylic acid is. So that gives us 4-hydroxy heptanoic acid. OK, the second one. The main chain here is six carbons long. The two functional groups are a ketone and a carboxylic acid. Again, the acid wins in terms of priority, so we have hexanoic acid. And our list tells us that when the ketone is not the priority group, it's known as oxo. And here it is on the fourth carbon, so this molecule is 4-oxo-hexanoic acid. 